Okay, so here we have a question on uh, moving averages and uh, time related data. So it's about the number of uh, days of work lost per quarter uh, due to illness. So we've got some data uh, broken up into quarter periods and they've already drawn uh, the original data on the graph and plotted some of the moving averages already. So the first question is asking us um, why should the company uh, consider four point moving averages? Well, if we look at the original data, it's been split into quarters, so it's going in periods of four. So basically for here, we would just be saying why should the company consider using four point moving averages? Um, data has been collected in four period blocks across each year. So something like that just to show uh, that it's been broken into four quarter blocks. If it had been split into say weekly blocks of seven days a week then you might have done a seven point moving average. So it's about um, what periods have you been using. So say you've been using four periods so four point moving average makes sense. It then asks us to calculate the remaining four point moving averages and plot them on the graph. So we can see so far that they've worked out one, two, three, four, five, six of the moving averages already. So we're looking at four points for each moving average. So those four points were the first moving average and that's calculated in the middle there, in the median position. So we've got four points then we need to count down six places because I've already done one, two, three, four, five, six. So they've calculated that one, that one, that one, that one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are the ones we need to calculate then. So that's in the middle of four points. So we're going to start with these four points here. And then when we've calculated that average, we're then going to move down one place because it's a moving average, and then calculate the next four values. So in some terms then we're going to have 180 plus 120 plus 232 plus 244. Uh, we need to remember that the moving average is about the mean average. So we calculate that. So we've got 180 plus 120 plus 232 plus 244 divide by 4, so 194 and then and, uh, like we said we then move down one position and we take the next set of numbers which will go 120 plus 232 plus 244 plus 216 and again divide by 4 so 120 plus 232, plus 244, plus 216, always press equals before you do divide, so divide by 4 equals so 203, and then we move down and we do the last four points, so we've got 232, plus 244, plus 216, plus 124, again divide by 4, so we've got 232 plus 244 plus 216 plus 124 press equals divide by 4 hmm. that seems a little bit low so let's just check how many silly mistakes so we've got 232 plus 244 plus 216 plus 124 equals divide by 4 equals yeah so 204 uh, type something wrong that didn't seem right because those were in the 200s okay so we've got 194 203 and 204 it says then on the diagram um, draw a trend line for the moving averages um, well we've got to remember that we had to plot the three that we'd calculated so if we go back to the graph and we'll plot those and again what we've got to remember isn't it that whenever we've got a graph we've got to work out the scale so if we look up here we can see that there's five little squares for every 20 so each little square is worth four so I have to plot 
194. Now the 194 goes in the middle of the four days results used. So that's in between the fourth quarter and the first quarter. So we can see that they went across a period. So between the fourth quarter and the first quarter. So between the fourth quarter and the first quarter we come up and we've got 180, so 184, 188, 192, so 194 is going to be in the middle of that. And then the next one's at 203, so again we come across one period. So 203, uh, there's 200, so 204, so it's just going to be slightly below there. And then we come across one more period and we've got to plot 204. So 204 is exactly on the line. Okay, so those are the moving average plot. It's the question said uh, draw the trend line. So we get our ruler, and the trend line should um, follow the uh, direction of the crosses, and ideally you should try and go through as many of the crosses as possible. So our trend line across the whole graph and beyond. So this trend line is showing a increasing trend. So we must remember again with moving averages, um, although it looks like a scatter graph in a sense, um, we shouldn't use the words correlation because it's about trends of uh, moving time data. So here we've got an increasing trend. So let's have a look. So we've done that bit. Um, it then says by calculating the mean seasonal effect for the first quarter, estimate the number of days likely to be lost in the first quarter of 2004. So again, this is um, the power of statistics. We've got some data, we've got a trend, um, we're going to use it to predict uh, what's going to happen beyond our known data so far. So basically that's over a centimetre. So for the fourth for the first quarter then um, we do a dot a centimetre over. That's where we're going to predict the two thousand and four data. So if we come straight up to our trend line and then we come across and read off. Then we can see that our trend line is suggesting a value of around 208. So we need to estimate the seasonal variation for quarter one. Now, to estimate the seasonal variation, we take the actual data for that quarter and we subtract the trend line number. This trend line number is at 184. The actual data value for this first quarter it was um, 220. So 220 take away 184 is 36. So for our first quarter in 2001, our seasonal variation there was um, 1636. So now we need to do the first quarter in 2002 and then the first quarter in 2003. So again we go to our graph and we look at the difference between the actual value and the trend line value. So the trend line value, scale of 4 again, so 180, 184, 188, 192. So the actual value for the first quarter was 228. So we're going up from 192, so 8 to 200, plus the 28 makes 36. So our seasonal variation for quarter one in 2002 was 36 as well. And then we do the same thing for quarter one in 2003. So our trend line value is 200. Our actual value was 32. So the difference here is 32. So to get our mean seasonal effect, so the mean seasonal variation, and we're going to do 36 plus 36 plus 32, share by 3. So 36 plus 36 plus 32, share by 3. So to one decimal place, 34.7. So our estimate then is going to be the trend line value for the first quarter in 
2004 so we came up to the trend line and read across and we suggest the value is going to be 208 so our estimate is going to be 208 plus the seasonal variation now it's plus because we were above the line for each of the quarters now if we'd have calculated the seasonal variation for qu quarter 4 then we can see we'll be going below the trend line so that would mean we'd be doing a takeaway so here we've got a plus because we're above the line so we add on the 34.7 so our estimate for quarter one in 2004 will be 242.7 okay the trend line is for the number of days of work lost to increase so the trend is so just a reason for this Okay, so again, this is about um, your real life uh, understanding. So, due to illness, employers get injured and shown. Um, the number of days lost is increasing. That's what the trend line is suggesting. Um, so, why might that happen? The trend line for the number of days of work lost is just a reason for this. Well, a, a reasonable reason would be something like um, the company is uh, growing in size. So, company has grown in size um, because the proportion of um, the company um, being ill could remain constant but the number of days lost could increase because you've got more employees so that might be a reason for why okay so that's moving averages um, trend lines and mean seasonal variation so hopefully you found that uh, useful